Today is Monday, March the 16th, 2020. I am Julie Hankinson, and this is the view out my window. I am sure that you can hear the wind howling in the background. I mean, it is rattling the windows and, and just um, really whipping up white caps. Um, it is very windy out today. That aside, um, it is a little bit later today because I took the time to make a huge pot of stew so that I could put it in the fridge and make sure that I had good, nutritious meals for lunch. <sighs> because I am making up quite a few good, nutritious meals to put in the fridge to be no-brainers. Uh, right now, we don't know, um, well, we do know that currently we're going into work. However, uh, truthfully, they are setting us up um, to work from home. And we can see this nationwide that corporations, uh, the big ones, are setting up their employees to work from home and to self-isolate if at all possible, because it looks to be that we're going to have a nationwide um, isolation event going on for everything I keep reading says 90 days, because they are really having a hard time getting a handle on this outbreak and they are expect, expecting some astronomical numbers when they start actually doing testing and finding out what the real numbers of infection are. Already the hospitals are stretching at the seams and they are afraid that they're going to be overwhelmed. Uh, we already have um, some healthcare professionals who have uh, been infected and are in the ICU. And this is not boding well um, for us that our healthcare system is already uh, experiencing uh, straining at the seams. We have seen um, extreme cases like uh, Austria where they are banning any groups larger than five. <laughs> yes, uh, Ohio just um, said all bars and restaurants are closed. You can go in and pick up your order, but you're not staying. And um, we are seeing more and more school closures because they know that uh, once you get a child infected, the parent's gonna be the next one to be infected because you know the majority of parents care about their children and they're going to stay home and care for them and not always take precautions um, to protect themselves because let's face it, there are children, we love them. And um, so this is just becoming a potential um, mass casualty situation, to be quite frank. I know they're saying a low chance of um, serious infection, but their low chance of serious infection is actually categorized as only getting pneumonia. And pneumonia can leave you with an impaired lung capacity. So if you're looking at a one in five chance, is that what they're saying? Of a low infection, and no, we're not just talking the uh, fever, cough, cough. <laughs> we are talking low, as in not making it into the ICU. Um, they're talking, um, just taking up a hospital bed, not being incubated, you know, not having a breathing tube shoved down your throat. Um, 
And that's friggin' scary to me to be truthful. And um, I just don't like those odds. I know people are saying, well, this is mass controlling and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm not having a problem self-isolating to present, prevent myself from being one of those people occupying a hospital bed. I would just as soon drive with my seatbelt on, thank you very much. And I see self-isolation as being driving with your seatbelt on. It's that ounce of caution. You don't know if there's gonna be an accident, but you want to be prepared and, you know, to make the best of it. So definitely make sure you've got food, stuff that you like to eat because we can anticipate that the government's going to step in and perhaps deliver rice and beans and maybe flour, um, but even sugars are, you know, all the good stuff is already in short supply. So if you like something, you better get it now to help make the next 90 days um, you know, much more bearable. Um, if you have a small yard, you might actually invest in some seeds uh, so that you could plant a garden with your children. Um, my daughter has mentioned that Amazon actually has uh, educational programs that I think it's, she said it was $8 a month and you can, you know, just watch all the programs you want. She said some were dry and some were rather good. But her children are teenagers, so, um, you know, yours might want to, you know, watch something else. But we can't just live in front of the Xbox or Netflix. We're going to get even bored of those after a while. So we need to anticipate and plan for what we're going to do with our time. Are we going to learn another language? Are we going to play board games? Are we going to learn to cheat at cards? <laughs> uh, I mean, whatever it is, we need to make sure to preserve our safe space. And remember that if we have anyone coming in and out of our space, it is no longer a safe, clean space because there is potential for contamination. Um, it is, you know, I'm, I'm a little cautious here, but the fact is we do have healthcare workers who are going to need help with childcare, especially since schools and childcare centers are being going to be shut down. That said, if you know someone who is a trusted friend and, you know, they're totally upfront um, about the situation, you may consider offering to assist them with childcare. But remember, that they are on the front lines and they are going to be exposed and then their children will be potentially exposed. So definitely um, be upfront about the hand washing. Um, if you've got masks, uh, sanitizers, whatever, use them and you know, this is something that you want to seriously consider, but it is also at the same time a serious need um, because these people are putting their lives on the line and they are so necessary right now. Just like the EMTs and the firefighters and even the utility workers, you don't think about it but you need water coming into your home. And if those utility workers aren't getting out there to keep the water plant working and operational, you're not gonna have water pressure and you're not even gonna be able to flush your toilet. 
So that said, again, please stock up on water just in case. Please make sure you have some good canned goods so that you have something appetizing to go with your rice and beans. <laughs> Um, you know, make sure you have some spices to make it taste better. Uh, make sure you have um, educational opportunities to um, make yourself think occasionally. You know, uh, you can only watch um, all the seasons of The Walking Dead, you know, for so long until you turn into a zombie yourself. So we are all going to be presented with numerous opportunities to help each other, but also to protect ourselves. And all of this is going to take planning and communication. And this whole situation is evolving, I mean, day by day. And remember, even if we are self-isolating, there's always Skype or texting or all sorts of communication, uh, Zoom, all these things that we can do to stay in touch. Just because you're self-isolating doesn't mean you have to go into a spiraling depression because you're not, um, you know, socializing or communicating with other people. It just means that you're um, maintaining your safe space. So do think about all these things and don't be that driver who's driving without a seatbelt. Please think about not only yourself, but also the people around you and how your behavior affects them. And that said, I wish everyone the best um, and hope that you all make it out on uh, the safe side. And I hope to talk with you again tomorrow night. So you all take care and um, definitely um, take care of yourselves and protect yourselves and your families. All right, good night.